what you're going to see is this. Um, either I'm standing behind Christ in a, in a response, or I'm standing behind Frederick Douglass. Because God gave us that. But here's what you have to keep in mind. Whenever I, I don't do liberal talk shows anymore. <laughs> and they don't invite me. <laughs> they don't invite me. But when you're engaging, here's what you must keep in mind. You know, they say in the art of negotiation, he who speaks first loses. That doesn't work when you're engaging. When you're engaging, he who speaks first wins. There are certain things you must say first when you're engaging. If not, you're going to be toast. You must say some things first. What are all those things you must say first? Number one, you must say that I'm a Frederick Douglass Republican. And you must, and they're going to come and ask you, are you a Republican? I'm not a Republican. I'm a Frederick Douglass Republican. There's a distinct difference between the two. The Republican Party today does not resemble the party of Douglas. And we're going to help the Republican Party to recapture its political distinction. You must let them know and say over and over and over, the Republican Party today does not resemble the party of Douglas. That's what you've got to say that first. Don't let them beat you in telling you the Republican Party today doesn't resemble the party of Douglas. You may come back, but you now you're on the defense. And they think they just drew blood. So you must say first. I'm a friend of Douglas Republican. The Republican Party today does not resemble the party of Douglas. We need people in both parties with a friend of Douglas perspective. That's number three. You have to set the perimeter up for your ex-military people. You gotta set up the perimeter first. Because if you don't set that up, then you 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 when you do that, you're taking away one of the arrows out of there. Yeah, ammunition pile to use against you. So, okay, Carl, you're a Republican. And you don't have to write this down, but you can put the pain guy that's in there. All this, this pattern that I'm laying out for you is in there. Okay, Carl, you're a Republican. I'm a Frederick Douglass Republican, and there's a difference between the two. The Republican Party today, today does not resemble the party of Douglas, and it does not. And through agitation, political activism, we got to get the Republican Party back to where it was when it was the vanguard of the Constitution and made the plight of the poor and the working poor a legislative priority. Now, in terms of entitlements for a lifetime, we elevate the poor to become employees and entrepreneurs. One of the challenges there, <laughs> whenever I'm engaging somebody, there's always a silver bullet. The silver bullet is the last bullet they have in the revolver. And they're going to use it. That's what's going to happen. You're going to get challenged with repeat, on average, no, no, no liberal is going to challenge more than with three challenges at one time. So you're going to punch, they're going to counter punch. You're going to punch, they're going to counter punch. After that, they're gone. Satan tempted Christ thrice. And he left. He, he didn't go all, totally away. He just, just kind of rested in the bushes for his next opportunity. Uh, here's a silver bullet I always get asked when they can't when they can't handle anything else. Do you support President Obama? I got you now. Do you support President Obama? How do you respond to that? I mean, don't write this down because it's another country. And the way I respond is this. Look, I will support anybody that's in line with my values. But you're not gonna make me spit in my God's face and vote for somebody that I don't agree with. I'm not gonna do it. I don't care if it's Obama or President Obama or President Bush. I'm going to vote my values. You're not going to take me back where God delivered me from. I'm, I'm going to vote my values. Period. And that Frederick Douglass thing is so key, never let anybody call you a Republican singularly or a conservative singularly. It's over with. You're going to be attacked. Those are attack words. I was on a panel one time, like four of us, and uh, three liberals and a woman. Uh, blacks, three, three blacks who vote Democrat, and myself. And they described me, we got K. Carl Smith here, black conservative. I said, wait a minute. Call me by my political name. I'm a friend of the Douglas Republican. No, we got black conservative. I said, no, sir, call me. I said to the moderator, call me by my name. You did not name my children, you're not going to name me. I'm a friend of the Douglas Republican, sir, call me by my political name. He did. Call me by political name. Don't let them separate you. They'll sit like we. Mm -hmm. And that's what they want to do. 
Here's another thing. This is John Stewart's show. I did. A, I led. A, I led a breakout event, a breakout session at CPAC back in March last year. You probably heard about it. I'm doing a breakout uh, session on on truck the race car, and uh, a guy named Scott Terry stands up doing q and A. &A he made a racist and sensitive statement. And when he made the statement, the people, the conservatives in the room, were appalled. They did not applaud. They were appalled. The liberal reporters in the room, from the Huffington, Huffington Report and all that kind of stuff, they ran out of the room and started writing a story that when he made this racist, uh, racially insensitive statement that the conservatives in there were applauding. That's not true. That's not true. I was emailed by George Reed, who's on MSNBC, on the talking heads, black female. She emailed me, I called her. She said to me, did you see the video? What happened at CPAC uh, about a guy doing a breakout session? I said, no, man, I don't need to see the video. I was there. That was me. <laughs> I don't need to see the video. And she goes on to say, it seemed like that when he made that statement, people were applauding. I said, no, his little flunkies around him were applauding, but he didn't have a microphone when he spoke up in the back. But the people who heard him were appalled. Now, if you get on the show, you tell a lie that they're applauding, you're lying. I'm telling you what happened. She got on the show, said the opposite of what I said. <laughs> Total opposite. John Stewart, after that, John Stewart had this little, you know, John Stewart, his job is to make mockery of this. That's all, that's all he does. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had uh, a black man sitting at the desk with him on the show, and they were criticizing me or making mockery of me because I used Frederick Douglass. And they'll say, oh man, come on, you're going to go back to Reconstruction to get some identity? Come on, come on. They never call me. They never ask me how to respond. When you see John Stewart, here's how I will respond. And I respond this way. So you going to make mockery of me because I went back 150 years to read the writings of Douglas. Christians go back more than 2,000 years to read the writings of the prophets to get some spiritual inspiration. So do our Jewish brothers and sisters. They, bust, they go back more than 2,000 years to get some spiritual inspiration. I go back 150 years to get some political inspiration. That's what I have to say. God pricked my spirit and had me read Douglas. Because here's what they don't understand. The principle that Douglas talked about and our father and fathers talked about and they wrote about, they stand the test of time. They stand the test of time. Their job is to deceive. I'm talking about the leadership of the Democratic Party. It's to distort. It's to accuse and rewrite history. You will be attacked. Their job is to attack. Because the job is to what? Try to discredit us. Those are all demonic techniques. If you read Revelations 12 and 10, Revelations 12 and 10 says that, it goes and says that Satan sits at the throne of, all, of God all day long. All night long, he is the accuser of the brethren. Now think about it. Mr. Satan himself, Mr. Wrongdoer himself, sitting at the throne of God accusing us of wrongdoing, mm -hmm. accusing us what he's guilty of. That's the left. They accuse us of what they're guilty of. Because by accusing us, the, whole, the spotlight is cast on someone else, not them. So how do I find liberalism? And I'm not talking about the liberal, the classic case. If you want to look at class stuff, uh, in terms of classic use of the word liberal, I'm a liberal. Mm -hmm. Okay, the classic use. But the word liberal has changed over the years. Okay? So I'm not using the word liberal in the classic sense. Okay? If that was the case, I'll be a Frederick Douglass liberal. <coughs> okay? Don't change what I'm giving you. It's Frederick Douglass Republican. Don't go around here and call him Frederick Douglass Patriot. Or Frederick Douglass Libertarian. <laughs> the strength of this whole philosophy that it's an oxymoron. Frederick Douglass Republican. I'm giving it to you the way God gave it to me. Don't change it. I was somewhere speaking. Well, can we call it Frederick Douglass Libertarian? I said, no, leave it alone. <laughs> That's not an oxymoron. Frederick Douglass Patriots, not oxymoron. The strength why this whole thing works because it's an oxymoron. And so when people hear it, they're stopped, dead in their track. 
and what they want to, what are you talking about? And why? Now here's something I learned. When someone that's not, that's why I said you got to stop leaving line and you can't engage. Here's the reason why. Because you're white, you can't engage somebody of different ethnicity. When someone that's not an African American says, I'm a friend of the Douglas Republican. But what I'm saying is, it's more powerful when you say it than when I say it. Yeah. That's why all we hear through the media, white conservatives are racist. They're racist, 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 racist. They have no redemptive quality in their life. They'll always be racist. That's what, that's what I was taught. So you gotta fight them. But when a white person says, once you carefully study that, show yourself approved. I'm a friend of the Republican. You just shifted the thing. Why is this white person calling Douglas in high esteem? Why are you using Douglas's name? Why? That's when you start driving the narrative. You frame the discussion that's about to flow, about to ensue. You're in control of the conversation now. And you don't have any fears of being labeled a racist or a sellout. Simple. Simple. Like I said, I didn't come up with this. I'm just so happy to be the one that God gave the message to. When we go out here and engage, our job is not to convert. That's the Holy Spirit's job. You don't convert. You just share the information and go along. When I go out and speak, I'm not trying to convince or uh, convert someone to this way of thinking. My job is to share it with you and leave you alone. Share it with you, leave it alone. When I talk, I want to try to convert my parents. I'll share the truth with them, let them alone. Leave them alone. Because once they hear it, they are now accountable. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So God has his hand working in the glove that you can experience in this country. We can change political culture in this country. In one or two election cycles, I do believe. But we've got to grow a nationwide army of Fred and Douglas Liberty Messengers. And we have to be everywhere, the progressive there, they're spearing out there, their their propaganda, we gotta be there matching it. And sharing this truth. We have truth on our side. So we will win. I read the last chapter of the book. Just gotta go through some things. Um, what another challenge is this. Now I speak at Tea Party events. God is doing something very unique with me. God has put me on the inside of conservative groups to help, if there is racism, to help elevate the level of morality uh, of people in these groups. Uh, I'm in conservative groups speaking. So, so God has sent me places that some folks won't dare to go speaking. You ever heard of Foresight, George? If you don't know think about Foresight, Georgia, that's supposed to be KKK territory. It is so bad, so to speak, that I've heard that one time, Oprah Winfrey brought, had a show, uh, did a show in, in, in Forsyth, Georgia. That's where God sent me to speak. Well, I didn't go, I sent my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't go, I had a, a scheduling conflict. <laughs> Seriously, I had a scheduling conflict. But I'm going back to it. And uh, what God is doing with us in this movement that we are becoming, we are. Um, we, we, we interact and we impact. Instead of insulting, instigating, but this is a thing appointing, we interact and impact. If there is racism within the Tea Party, and I never experienced it, but I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be naive enough to think that it doesn't exist, because you have uh, one or two misfits in any organization to give it a bad name. So now, I'm not, a nut, now I'm, not, I'm not crazy. I do, I do fully practice my Second Amendment rights. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I practice my second in the right. So I'm not crazy when I go to these places. But, I, but I don't, I, when God tells me to go, I'm not going to be like Joe and go take a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go speak. And so, what we're doing as Frederick Douglass Republicans and Frederick Douglass Leader Messengers, we're interacting and impacting. I'm talking to people that look like me. Um, and that's what you have to do. We have to be able to cross that whole mindset that you have to be of a certain ethnicity to engage people again and again and again. Stop believing that lie. 
if you, if you accept that lie, we're doomed. Because I believe the greatest unused asset that we have to restore liberty, defend the Constitution in this country, are white conservatives. There's more of you than in life. So sure That's by sure numbers alone. But no one has taught you how to engage, how to have a conversation with anybody without the fear of being called a racist or a sellout. How do you do that? Once you learn how to do that, we can start flipping people to both their values. That's what, so we got to grow this army. <clears throat> we got to grow this army of Frederick Douglass Liberty Messengers, cutting across, in, including all ethnicities, ages, and gender. It's all about liberty. And that's why Douglass is so key, because if you're serious about defending liberty, and we got to make Douglass part of that equation, because Douglass wrote about this. Slavery was not a metaphor for him. It was real life. And it works. This day's been barbershop tested. This whole methodology's been barbershop tested. This story, and it's a true story. I'm, I'm not, I mean when I say that. Of course, I didn't go to the barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> when God perfected this message in me, um, the first person I tried this on was my younger brother, pastor, 30 some years, PhD out of Vanderbilt. And I sat him down for about six months. I said, read this on Douglas, read this on Douglas. Read this in the Constitution. Read the Federalist Papers. Read this stuff, read this stuff. And I, and I start, and this is before the companion guide was written. I said, here's how you handle the challenges. So one particular morning, Saturday morning, we live in Birmingham. I said, let's go to Atlanta. And, uh, and I put a shirt on, with the shirt that we produce. And we have a shirt that we, we produce. It has three big bold letters on it. And it says, FDR <laughs> is not who you think. <laughs> President Douglas Republic. And that's what it's Douglas in the center. So I put the t-shirt on us, let's go to Atlanta. So we drove to a, we went to the hood in Atlanta. A neighborhood I've never been in, he's never been in. We pull up to a black barbershop. I said, get out. Go get your haircut, I'll be back in two hours. <laughs> so, I said, brother, you gotta have faith and confidence that what I'm teaching, what I'm teaching you works. I gotta go put you in the lion's den. Now go to the lion's den, get your haircut, I'll be back in two hours. So he walked, he walked in, get on this shirt. I come back two hours later, pull up to how did it go? He gets in the car and says, man, this thing works. I said, tell me about it. He said, I walked in, I sat down. After five minutes in a black barbershop, two men said to him in unison, are you a Republican? <laughs> he was trained. He said, no, I'm not a Republican. I'm a Frederick Douglass Republican. And there's a difference between the two. Mm -hmm. 